All right, we look at the graph on the right, and they're asking us a series of questions about this graph. So the first question is, what's the domain of f? Okay, and your domain is going to be all of your x values. So how far to the left and how far to the right does this graph go? Now you can see it goes to the left with an arrow, so it goes to negative infinity. And if you follow this graph to the right, to the right it's just going to keep going. Okay, if you're walking along this line and you're looking for an x up or down, you're going to find it, and you're going to find that it goes on forever and ever. So the graph never stops going to the right. It never stops going to the left. So the domain is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now what's the range of the graph? How high up and down does the graph go? Well, we can see that it's going to go up forever. But does it go down forever? Is there any graph when you down here and you're looking for a graph? I don't see any. So I'm looking for a graph. I don't see any. Where do I first see a graph? Boom, right here. And what is the y value? If I look back here, my y value is negative 1. So the range of this graph is all your y values. And this graph is going to go from negative 1 all the way to infinity. Now for interval notation, infinity always gets a parenthesis. And this negative 1, is there a point on negative 1? Yes, there is. So this is going to get a bracket. It doesn't start right above negative 1. It actually has a point on negative 1. So question C, the x-intercepts. Well, we look along the x-axis. And anywhere where it crosses are going to be the x-intercepts. So we have one x-intercept here and one x-intercept here. And now this point on the left is at 2 comma 0 and the point on the right is at 4 comma 0. So those are my two x-intercepts. 2 comma 0, 4 comma 0. And it's probably going to tell you to enter your answers separated by a comma. Okay, so your x-intercepts are the places where your graph crosses the x-axis. Part D asks for the y-intercepts. And that's where your graph crosses the y-axis. So does this graph cross the y-axis at all? Yep, right here. Okay, and what is the ordered pair of this point? It's going to be 0 in the x direction and 8 up in the y direction. So part D, my y-intercept, is 0, 8. Part E, intervals on which f is increasing. Okay, well increasing means that if we're going from left to right, if it goes up, it's increasing. So let me start following the graph. I'm going from left to right. Am I increasing? No. Am I decreasing? No. This is constant until I get to this point. At this point, it's not constant anymore. What is it doing now? Now it's decreasing. Okay. From left to right, if you're going down, it's decreasing. Decreasing, decreasing, still decreasing, still decreasing, still decreasing. Boom. I stop here, and now guess what? From left to right, I'm going up, increasing, 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 and we're going to see it increase forever. Okay, so let me color code this. Constant is going to be blue. Decreasing is going to be red. And increasing is going to be purple. Okay, so E asks us for the interval in which f is increasing. Well, it's the purple stuff. It starts right here at 3, and it goes on forever. Okay, so we're giving them values of the domain now. It starts at 3 in the x direction, and it goes to infinity. Infinity always gets a parenthesis. And now, is the 3 included? This actual point 3, is that 
increasing at the point 3? No, that's where it stops decreasing and starts increasing. So the actual point of 3 is not included. But as soon as you hop over that line of 3, 3.1, 3.2, then it's increasing. So this 3, I'm going to put a parenthesis. Let's look at part F, intervals on which it's decreasing. So this is the red, and the first point is here. Okay, at that point it's not decreasing, that's where it's changing, but it decreases all the way from that point to this point. And we're given x values. So it starts decreasing at 0, and it stops decreasing at 3. So decreasing is from 0 to 3. 0 is not part of it, and 3 is not part of it. Okay, because it's not actually decreasing at zero. That's where it's transitioning from one to the other. G is the values at which it's constant, and that was my gray, my blue up here. So it's constant all the way from negative infinity all the way to zero. Negative infinity to zero. Okay, don't get fooled. You're going to look up here, and you're going to look at this eight right there it's gonna say 8 and you're gonna say oh it goes from negative that 8 is your y value so you only want to give them your x values part H says the number at which F has a relative minimum okay well the minimum is a a point where when you look to the left and you look to the right everything is above you okay so you are below everything to the left you're below everything to the right and you can see that your minimum is going to be right here. All right. So it wants to know the number at which f has a minimum. OK, so the number at which it has a minimum is right here at 3. And then the next question says, what is the relative minimum of f? Okay, so part I now is asking me, what is the relative minimum? Well, we have a minimum here at 3. And then what is the minimum is how low do we go? Okay, if I'm thinking about this as a price, your price is constant until you hit he 0. And then your price starts going down. Where does it start going up? What's the lowest price you get to? And that's going to be right here, negative 1. Negative 1 is the minimum. Part J. Boy, they, they're asking a lot of stuff in this question. Part J says, what is the F of negative 1? Okay, so remember, F of X. F of X, right? Which F of X is really your Y, but F of X. So if they want the F of negative 1, guess what? Negative 1 is my X. So if I look on the x for negative 1 right here where do I find my graph I look down I don't see any graph down there let's look up where's the graph right here at negative 1 and it's at 8 so the f of negative 1 is 8 part k the values of x for which f of x is 3. All right, part k. So the f of x is going to be 3. Now remember, the f of x is your y. f of x, let me put it up here. f of x is your y. So where is the f of x 3? Well, let's look on. Let's go up to y equals 1, 2, 3. Let's go to y equals 3. And when I look to the left, I'm looking for a graph. I don't see any. I look to the right. I see one point here. And I see another point here. So I see two points. The values of x for which f of x is 3. Well, I know my y value, or my f of x, is 3. What are the values for x? 1 and 5. So when the f of x is 3, x is going to be 1 and 5. 
okay and I'm guessing they're gonna want you to put the answer separated by a comma and then L H I J K L is it even odd or neither okay and that's symmetry if I sliced it right down the X is it the same thing on the right is that the same thing that's over here no is this the same thing over here no okay so it's not symmetric about the y-axis it's not even and is it odd it would have to be symmetric about the origin I would have to flip it this way and then I would have to flip it this way and looking down at the purple down there is that do I see that right there no okay so this is not symmetric it's not even or odd so this is neither alright anybody want to timestamp this video for A through L I'm sure that would be helpful